Night has fallen and you're weary from travel. Stars fill the sky above, and in front of you is a brightly lit wooden house, the only building you've seen for days. You walk toward the house, hearing the sounds of laughter and talk as you reach the door and push it open. You sit down and join the game. It's a cheap buy-in, and not many of the other players are very good. The lady fiddling with dice gets good cards, but has no real strategy. The man to your right seems to just hold on to the highest cards he has, regardless of suit or any consideration of matches. The man in gray across from you, though, he's good. He already had the largest pile of coins when you bought in, and while your winnings grow quickly, you can't quite catch him. One by one, the other players leave the table, sometimes with peak or with wry humor, leaving their winnings with you or the man in gray. Finally, it's just you and the man in gray. He looks at you, full of humor and winks. Last hand? He deals, you draw, and look at your hand. It's good. It's great. The best hand, in fact. A royal straight flush. Spades. Aces high. But the man in gray pushes forward his whole pile. You're not sure exactly how much it is, but it's more than you've got. You can't match that. The man in gray stops you. Now, if you like, I'll let you wager your word. I know you'll be good for it. Just promise you'll pay the debt, however I ask. The man in gray smiles. All right, then. I'll call. Well, your luck wasn't so good, was it? That's quite the hand, but not for the game we're playing. I'm afraid you owe me. Your life, sure. But more than that, your labor. You see, this land is built on stories. It's one big story, this country, woven of many small ones. Few of the small ones are strictly true, and the big story is mostly a lie. All the stories and songs and myths and legends start somewhere with a seed. As they're told and retold and passed around, they grow and change to become the stories we know. To pay your debt to me, you'll be carrying stories, finding the seeds first and then spreading them telling them onwards so they can begin gaining strength. 
This is no light task. Stories are heavy. Most of the stories you'll find will be small seeds. They might be true, but they'll grow wild and unbelievable with the telling. The more important stories are the true ones. The ones people will tell you about their own lives. Those often get lost in the weaves of the big story. The more true stories you can find and tell, the more you can weave that truth into the big story. Tarnish it a bit perhaps, but isn't a dingy and battered truth better than a shining lie? Now, go ahead. You tell me a story. I'll trade you some information about your task. That's your job. Wander from place to place, gather those stories and spread them. People get bored hearing the same stories over and over. But an old cliché in one state might be a rip-roaring new yarn in another. Just luck. Funny how bad luck seems to follow the folks who already have problems aplenty. Well, try your luck out there in this country. See how the dice treat you. It's not all bad. You'll have to work hard, but I'll give you the gift for seeing the true shapes of people. Not many who can do that. You sometimes have to make choices about what kind of story you're finding. Is it a love story or a tragedy? Don't gather too many of one kind though. This grand story needs variety. Your deepest desires your greatest wish, heaven? Big Rock Candy Mountain? El Dorado, the promised land? That place just over the ridge where they all say that the water tastes just like the sweetest wine. 
Well, I don't know where that is. It's supposed to be somewhere in this country. Ask the people you meet. They're all searching for the same thing. I'll strip away your flesh to make the journey easier, but still you'll feel pain. Hunger, weariness, thirst and despair, they're all part of stories, the part not often told. And death, yes, but don't worry, as long as your task remains, you come back. Go on your way, seeker. Maybe we'll meet again, or maybe not. Either way, it'll be an experience for you. I'm jealous in some ways. I hope you find what you're looking for. Caked women leaning over the porch railing when share I'm the same bored grin. One shouts at you. Lend a couple innocent gals a cigarette. In my soul, my you are about to hand her a smoke when those men draw pistols and shove you hard into the dirt. You know these girls? They demand. Once they've dumped your bag out into the road, they decide you're harmless. If you were selling booze too, you'd have a lot more cash, sneers one. On the porch behind him, the two bootleggers are fingering their empty rifles, grinning in disappointment.
Off the road and into the woods, you can't help but come across this package by the old tree tied to a sturdy stick. The cloth wrapping conceals, though not particularly well, something large and softly unsettled. Little eyes blink back at you from inside the bundle. The shape gives a start. Please don't tell my pa that I'm in here. It says in a small voice. Pa doesn't want to live with us anymore. But I want to go with him. Don't tell him, please. I'm hiding. You tell the boy you'll keep his secret. You don't see his father anywhere. You don't see another soul for miles.
Crooked legs dangling over the water. He watches a pair of seagulls preen and groom each other on a rock just off the shore. Just when the fishing is going to be good, he taps great black, thick globs of spent tobacco out of a huge ceramic pipe. I got another year, I guess. Another year of this town being here. He replies, letting a grin spread across his face. If the seagulls came, that means enough fish to keep it in place. A woman walks the small town square with the poise of Betty Davis. A confident stride. An inimitable mannerism is elevated on the sidewalk into a plush Hollywood carpet. And wrapped around her neck, a yellow velvet ribbon, bright as an ocean sunrise. You question a well dressed man parked outside an oyster house. Prudish woman, I took her on a fine date and she didn't remove so much as a ribbon. Excuse me, can you step back from the coop? That's the spirit. Well, I'm you decide to seek a second opinion. You talk with a waitress smoking outside a diner. Something funny about her. Just showed up one day. Doesn't work. Doesn't live anywhere as far as I know. Just around. Myself. I'd love to know who made all her beautiful clothes. You may join her at a public bench. You may. Lovely outside, isn't it? Her eyes are a beautiful shade of brown. Beneath the yellow ribbon, a thick, fibrous scar wraps around her throat. Weather like this, it reminds me of Paris. Wandering the 
this rocky seaside road in the rain. Fortunately, you find the lighthouse door open with a daunting staircase before you. At the top of an ornate wrought iron spiral, you're breathless and feeling the strain on your knees. Rain already batters the walls outside. You can only knock on a heavy wooden door leading into the upper level. Muffled voices and light seep in beneath the door. Looks like we got a visitor. Sounds like a man's voice, deep and rough. Well, behave yourself. I'll open the door. Another man, this one with a higher, more sonorous voice. I always behave myself. He feigns indignation, but his tone betrays affection instead. After a moment, the door unlatches from the inside and opens. The man before you is tall and muscular, with a hint of a paunch beneath his wide chest. The heavy iron knob on the door looks nearly dainty in his huge hand. Didn't want to be out in this rain, did you? Come in. Despite the rough exterior, this room looks like a well-appointed parlor. There's a rug on the well-trod wooden floor and an enormously plush couch. And sat upon it is a stocky fellow grinning through a great hazel-colored beard. Tea? He offers, hoisting a teapot. A few years. The tall one sits on the sofa, wrapping his arm casually around the other lighthouse keeper. Five, says the smaller, but by no means small man. That long? Time flies. We traveled together before that. You must have some good stories from the road, huh? You wake up the next morning on their old sofa, still warm from an excess of tea. And cakes? There might have been little cakes. Prodigious snoring rumbles in from the floor above you, and you quietly take your leave. Dusty truck and a man on horseback pull up next to one another in front of the grocer. Suddenly, the driver and the rider, two wiry old men with identical haircuts, start shrieking at one another. The man with the truck leaps into the street. Brother! He shouts. The one on the horse tumbles out of his saddle. <laughs> Brother! He screams. They embrace in the road. Thirty years, hollers the driver. The rider, tears streaming down over his face, corrects him. No, thirty-two! Everyone here is watching these two older men cry and hug one another in the middle of Main Street. Cars and wagons are backing up. People are yelling. Take a photo of us! The driver begs you. Starts hauling a tripod out of the bed of his truck.
The long lost brothers pose in front of traffic, cry snot pouring out of their noses. As angry passerby wave you out of the road, each brother presses a coin into your hand. When the traffic disperses, you realize they overpaid you quite a shocking amount.